Hey you guys, it's Rena Wells, Medicine Woman and Intuitive. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, uh, I hope you find this in good health. And my returning subscribers, I'm excited that you're joining me on this new series of dark energy, black magic, karma, white magic, how it all works. On this first episode, uh, I'm just I'm not going to put any background music or anything. I'm just going to speak how father and mother are guiding me. And I prayed a lot before I came on. And Spirit was saying to be very authentic, to talk about my story, and how I came to know black magic, white magic, and everything else. And I've been initiated into this since I was a child. And as some of you know, I didn't have an awakening in this life. I have been awakened since I was a child. I was born awake and have seen spirits my whole life. And spirit wants to, is guiding me in the name of Christ. And I just, when I say that, I want you guys to realize I don't follow any religion. I believe that there is love and hidden in so many different avenues of our religions, of our ancient teachings, of uh, so many things in history have been hidden. And I've been on a journey for most of my life, I've been healing since I was 16 years old. I'm now 44. So I have a good understanding under my belt of energy, more than most people do. And I want to bring this forward because Spirit is really asking me to stand in my high spiritual rank. This is something that I haven't been able to do, uh, mostly because of ostracization, uh, people seeing me as evil, dark. <laughs> I've been told that my entire life, and I'm pretty much over it. And uh, I know my heart and I know my soul and I know what I'm here to do and I know how I'm here to help humans become symbiotic with nature, with the mother, with the womb of the mother, Mother Earth, and in transit to know the father. And in that, the mother and the father is the yin-yang balance of everything that is. And so in this series, I'm going to really talk about my story, how I've come to know Christ, how I've come to know God, how I've come to know the Mother, and my journey and my fine acute discernment of energy, which is constantly growing as well. I'm not an expert by all means, uh, but I definitely have an energy discernment to know people's paths, to know the righteous alignment of God, to bring the kingdom of God down. And I know this is going to sound very Christian and very religious, uh, but it's just how spirit speaks through me and I just want you to know I have no affiliation with any religion. I honor all religions, but I honor the love. I honor the light that is found, that's been hidden. So I'm not about following any structure. I've been on a self-discovery path for a long time. Okay, so Spirit is bringing me back to just talk a little bit about my experience with dark energies, and it's going to be a bit of a story time. So I hope you guys really enjoy it, and I really love to hear your comments. I love interacting with you guys, and the reason why I'm putting this out too is because I know I'm a bona fide twin flame. I'm, I've met my twin. Uh, I know our connection. We both are very aware of it, and we're not a mission per se yet. <laughs> I'm praying that we do. Uh, but this part of the journey is something that I was not expecting. And it's about demons, poltergeist activities, darker forces. And I believe that the set of twins that are meant to come into union, which is the expression of the mother energy, expression of the earth, expression of the father energy, creative energy, who created all the planets and the cosmos and everything else. And uses the mother energy, doesn't use, but plants the seeds in the mother to create and manifest, and the mother holds and nurtures and meets the masculine energy in some really deep places so those roots can grow deep into the soil. And that balance is uh, what I want to talk about as the Holy Trinity, which is what I've come to know as the mother and the father and the Holy Spirit. And this is why twins are really in a dark, dark place. Spirit is saying there may have been a few twins that have manifested to bring the concept of twin flames down, but 
the dark forces have manipulated Twin Flames in the New Age community especially, that it's become romanticized, it has become sexualized, it has become a form of levels that who's higher than the next and the desire to want that type of relationship. And this is where a lot of ego comes into because it's also in fact, I've experienced a lot of my life in regards to how clearly I see, how accurate I am, and how I know God that I have had people very um, deflective on me, on my abilities, how quick I can express God, uh, how God works through me, and uh, jealousy and competition has been something I've had to face my entire life. And uh, it's why I've also uh, become very much a hermit in my life, to the point till I met my twin. And uh, we'll get into that in a bit. But Spirit is bringing up the whole aspect in regards to the competition aspect and the want for power is very much how darker forces work, okay? The Spirit is saying there's, there's no reason why we can't own our power. That is not ego. It is not ego to own your beauty, to own your abilities, to be the expression of God. Where the dark forces comes in, and this is where that fine, minute piece of discernment is needed because people will come to you and say, oh, that's ego to say that you're beautiful or to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm gorgeous, look at me, I'm absolutely hot. Or to say, like, wow, I can't believe it, I can do this, I can manifest this, or I'm so sensitive and I can, <clears throat> excuse me, feel all of these things that I'm so powerful. It's when you bring the element of competition into it and the element of envy and lack. And if you can't honor somebody else's pure expression of their artistic abilities and be like, dude, I love, or my sister, I love what you're doing right now. Like, I can honor your power. It's so beautiful. Without feeling jealous or envious of that person, it means that you're acting in a true place of unconditional love. And in order to get to that place, it means that you have to own yourself so strong that if somebody does come towards you and says, that's vanity. You, you owning your beauty, that's ego. Is to be a, so assured in yourself to know where that person is coming from and to hold that space of light and stand up for yourself, truly, so that that energy cannot seep into your energy body. And your patterns from your family, things that you've experienced in your life, from your schooling, your upbringing, all of that, is going to affect how you let these darker energies in and unfortunately I don't want to play the victim and martyr role for you guys it's not something that I play into uh, it's hard though when you are victimized when you are attacked by darker forces to not feel victimized instead that is just an umbrella reaction human reaction we're trying to move out of the human reactions and to move into the higher frequencies of emotion which is gratitude and exploration and curiosity and love and peace and we must be aware too that darker forces will always try to siphon you and re-trigger those darker emotions and this is where people get uh, really trapped in healing that they're constantly healing i don't know if you've seen that I, i've definitely seen that um and that they just constantly keep re-triggering uh, a fresh wound that keeps opening and it's like, oh, I thought I healed this, I thought I healed this. And to a certain extent, you will know intuitively in your gut, remember everything sits in your gut intuition, and to work from that place first before the heart and mind, because the heart and mind can create a duality and a vortex that pulls you into uh, confusion and you become a vessel for darker forces if you continuously fight the mind and heart duality we must learn to get deep into the gut intuition and if it doesn't if you can take a concept and you bring it down into your gut and it shatters immediately and your gut says immediately it will give you an answer yes or no you know that that's what you need to follow as hard as it is and not to listen to the mind and heart and what happens is the darker forces use psychological patterns that tie to an emotion to siphon you. And so we can get stuck in the healing process for a very long time thinking, I'm not healing, I'm not healing, I'm not healing. But we get to a point where we're like, dude, like this is, what is this? Like, <laughs> I, I'm being siphoned. Like, this is not, 
I don't need to heal this anymore. I need to move on from this point of healing. And that's where we move out of victimization because if we believe we constantly have to heal, that means that we're constantly looking that something is wrong with us. Remember, you are created perfect in the eyes of God. You are perfect. You don't need to suffer. And I know it's hard not to feel bad if you're hurting people or you're changing up your ways or your roles in their life and you're standing up for yourself. Yes, there is an element of guilt and shame, but remember, those are empty emotions. And there are lower emotions that try to keep you stuck in a situation. We have to come to a point in ourselves, in our gut authenticity, to know, no, I have to stand up for myself. Because when you stand up for yourself and that ultimate self-love, you stand up in the light of God and you allow spirit to work through you. And when you allow that, you make those decisions no matter what your exterior world says to you. Even if people are hurt, even if people are upset, even if it means that uh, you're changing up the way life has always been. Well, nothing stays the same. Remember, if we stay stagnant, we don't grow, right? And we have to purify in the emotions that come from changing up those roles. And we break and rise and stand up for ourselves in that light. And when we can do that is when we elevate out of those lower emotions. If you keep getting re-triggered back into something, Spirit is saying, really look at that. Like, how long are you going to be in that stagnant loop, right? And you got to follow that gut intuition to be like, no, this is, this is, I know that when this stagnant loop hits or when guilt and shame come up, and if I know that I've owned up for myself as best as I could and somebody isn't getting it, it's not my problem, okay? And Spirit wanted to bring that up because that's a level of discernment a lot of twins are really suffering in, uh, and that's where darker forces keep us trapped as well, is in the guilt, shame, and... Um, yeah, and giving our power away instead of standing up for ourselves. It's even like trying to be supportive to people until they get to a certain point as well. Remember, everyone's on their own journey. We were born into this world naked with God, and we will die and return to God. So up until that point, it's, it's really uh, looking at your integrity and knowing who you are and through that standing up for yourself through that integrity you will completely come into alignment of what your soul is really meant to be doing here and i know that's a difficult path because this world is run by uh, exterior gratification right exterior validation uh, the needing to be seen in this incestuous pool of siphoning and we're going to talk about that in in this series as well with 3d and 5d and all of that with twin flames and and high level soulmates and things like that so spirit is bringing me back into letting you guys understand more about me so you can understand where i've known about darker forces my whole life i've seen demons my whole life i was somewhat initiated into some dark family lineage stuff that i've had to uh heal it's taken me a long time and uh yeah, they want to bring up the first aspect of like divination tools. So I'm not against divination tools. I use tarot. However, we must also realize that the reader that you go to or the healer that you go to must also have a clear channel. And I believe us as a collective are starting to move into this higher realm of knowing God on a, on a much more intimate basis. And you have to know Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. The healer and the reader that you attract, okay, is going to always make you feel good about your path, right? Even if it's a hard message to hear, and it means that you have to end something in your life or it's something you don't want to hear, you're going to understand the growth and the expansion process out of that. If you are going to a healer or a reader where you feel completely depleted, or, thank you, Spirit, that's one. It's not just depleted, okay? It's also, um, you'll know if you've been depleted because you're like, something won't feel good in your gut intuition, right? It's different if you're breaking because you need to heal and you're purging, right? That's different energy than if you're feeling completely exhausted and depleted, like someone's taking your energy. That's one aspect. When you're breaking 
and you're working with a healer who takes you into your emotions. You will break, you will feel, but it will be more of a release, okay? You won't be confused, you won't feel exhausted. That's the difference. Now, there's another aspect, and this is, I'm going to, I'm, I'm bringing out all this dark stuff that I've noticed in the medicine community, and I've seen experienced shamans who work with dark energies, and I'm just going to call it out because God wants me to, because Christ did that, Buddha did that, Allah did that, Muhammad did that, you call out the dark, okay, because that's when you stand in the light. And I'm going to talk about binding and spells, I'm going to tell you about my experience of how these Two people who were running ayahuasca retreats binded me, siphoned my twin, manipulated the karmic partner who is completely housed now by darker forces, and has trailed my name through the mud in the medicine community, okay? Has stolen my clients from me, okay? Because I've taken many people to ayahuasca retreats. To work with them, unfortunately, I'm very sorry because they're probably siphoned now, and I'm so sorry about that. But it's also part of the path because I was unaware that people could be this evil in what they work in. Okay. So we're going to get into that. And I don't, I, I'll see how long this channel goes through, but I'm, I'm just going with how spirit is guiding me. And when I, they're taking me back to the divination tools. When I worked in my divination tools and they were brought to me when I was eight years old, tarot. Um, when I was 16, they want me to tell you the story and how I know my discernment and how I, I've come to know Christ. Okay, when I was a child. <laughs> okay, they're taking me back. They're, lead, they're leading me through the storyline, guys. So I gotta back up. When I grew up in a family that was non practicing Muslims, okay, we would pretend that we were Muslim and go to my grandparents and pretend that we didn't eat bacon that morning and eat. We, we wear long clothes in the middle of summer and say, yes, we're not wearing shorts, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> it's a facade. Um, with a really good double life, just to appease my, my religious grandparents. Love them to death. But, yeah, and um, my mother, they, they didn't, my parents didn't pick any religion. They just left spirituality up for whatever we wanted. And my mom sent me to Sunday school when I was a little girl. And I loved it. And I thought everybody saw Jesus. I thought everybody saw Mother Mary. I thought this was a thing. And I saw Jesus whenever I go to Sunday school. And he'd like laugh at me. And I, and I loved him. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I'm like, oh, so this is what everybody sees when they go to church. <laughs> not knowing, like, no, Rena, that's not what everybody sees. So very naive, right? I, I still have that naiveness because I believe coming into the medicine community and thinking that I found my tribe, I was like, Oh, they all see what I see when they drink ayahuasca. No, that's not the case either. So, uh, it's just the naive of my innocent soul. So, um, some hard lessons when you have a sensitivity like that. And I know this is why I'm putting this out there, because I know you guys that listen to me have that in you. It's a softness, you know, it's a purity of your soul. And people siphon it. It's not right. Um, yeah, and so... I saw Jesus from a very young age. I saw demons and things siphoning people from a very young age. And um, I have three birds just, just landed here on the windowsill. Just, I'm in the hammock and they're just on the ease trough, I should say, and just staring at me. So there's the Holy Trinity right there. Um, thank you, Spirit. And so when I was about 16, I met a girl in high school who gave me my first deck, was gifted to me. And she worked a lot in black magic, not knowing that she did. And I was doing black magic with her spells and things like that, and love spells and all kinds of different things. And um, not knowing what I was doing. And now, keep in mind, a lot of people do this. They think energy is energy and you work in energy. And if you have a good intention, that's fine. You know, everything will be fine if it's from love. But we have to understand the way that we love is in direct correlation of how much you've healed, okay? Because if you're still trapped in certain patterns, right? If you're still working from a place of selfishness and ego, which a, a lot of these karmic energies or people that do black magic think they're doing good, you know, they feel like it's their path, and um, but they don't realize that they're doing it from a place of selfish to gain power or to gain something for themselves. They think energy is energy and that's that. We have to understand there is a hierarchy in the spiritual world. And I know this because I have a high spiritual rank. I've seen the high council that works with me since I was a little girl. And 
we need people in all places. It, it doesn't mean that you're better than anybody. It just means that's your placement. And everybody needs to be in their proper place to be able to function as an entire functioning consciousness to bring pure alignment to God, to bring that peace and that kingdom of heaven down. And if we can't do that, you know, we're going to end up creating multiple timelines and different dimensions and karma and a lot of pain and suffering. And so that's where I go to. And so my initiation into the dark realms is meeting this girl in school and uh, doing all this spell work. And I'll tell you, I started to feel my soul slipping away from me. It came to a point where my mother was very worried about the tarot that I was doing. She could feel something was wrong. My mom was highly psychic as well, but she doesn't work in it. She's afraid of it. And a lot of my family is afraid of it. Um, I have psychic on both my side. My dad sees entities as well, but he won't work in it. Um, so yeah, so I'm like double whammy in my DNA. It's like, thanks guys. <laughs> and so she got really worried when I was doing this stuff. And uh, she took my cards and she hid them. And I was getting a lot of power. And so Spirit wants to bring this up too, that when you're going to a healer or a reader and you're feeling like, ooh, there's zazazing. You know, you'll always get a solution or a guidance from your healer or your reader. You'll get the next steps. You'll get what you need to do to own your power. That's a key element, okay? Um, it's not going to be a feeder of the ego. What a lot of these medicine people do, these healers or these readers, what they do is they give you a zazazing feeling of power. Of, yeah! That's right! That's, you know... So powerful, and if that's the connotation, then you're being siphoned. And I learned that very young because it was giving me detailed psychic ability. But in dark magic, or if, with the dark forces, it comes in exchange because it needs, uh, there's not an ever flowing energy of light that comes to the darker forces, right? It has to be siphoned from somewhere else. And this is what black magic is. is. It, it works with the underworld and the 3D realm. It does not work with above the 3D realm. It also works with aspects of the astral plane to siphon the psychic channels in the astral plane. But beyond the astral plane, it does not work. That is God's domain, right? And so this aspect in regards to working with the underworld siphoning people and working and reading people from a 3D place instead of channeling Father God first. Uh, it's not, you're going to be working with other entities. Plain and simple. Now, granted, you may have to work with other entities to know your power, right? So I'm not saying you, not everyone can really go right to the Father. You know, it depends on your healing process, depends on how much you're purging, how much you're standing in your light, how much you're claiming your soul. That takes time, that takes work, that takes energy to focus on yourself. And, and enlightenment is a process. You're not going to wake up one day and be like, I'm so powerful on the weekend. And you're going to fall from that very quickly because there's an integration process that needs to happen. And what happened with me was I was getting such detailed messages, but it was taking in exchange pieces of my light to the point that I could not look at myself in the mirror anymore. I could not look at myself in my eyes because I knew it was being replaced by something dark. Okay? And it gave me a vision of where my mom hit the tarot cards and said it's right in this place where she took them. And I went and got them and my mom was like, where did you find them? I hit them. And I said, I told you, I'm psychic, I can do this. And it was an ego thing. You know, I'm powerful, look at me. No, 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 I'm going to do it. I was 16 years old, but, you know, there are people who are still in that energy, right? And here come the birds. <laughs> Two birds just flew by. So... When that happened and I was being siphoned, I, I knew I was losing the battle on the inside, that I was about to lose my soul, that I was about to be siphoned and completely vesseled, that I dropped to my knees and prayed. And this is why Jesus has made himself known to me since I was a child. 
and I prayed to Jesus and I said please God Jesus I don't know what I'm praying to but whoever created me whoever has my light my soul you need to help me please and at that point uh, that weekend I think it was like two days later I went to a party you know I'm 16 17 years old I'm like drinking I was drunk off my ass I think it was high as shit on that I don't know what I was doing drugs whatever I was doing <laughs> Hi. There was a girl there who came to me and she said, you know, I didn't even really know her. Um, she was a youth group leader at a Catholic uh, youth group church. But she said that God came to her and said, you know, why don't you come to me to this retreat? And I had just got into a big fight with my mom and I was kicked out of the house and I had nowhere to go. I was staying with a friend. Uh, it's just a whole lot of drama. Um, and so at that point, um, I decided to go because I had nowhere else to go. Um, and I went and I took my tarot cards with me. And these cards, I'll tell you, had a dark force attached to them. It was a trickster force. It was really about making you feel like you're so powerful and you get that ego rush and all of that. But it's siphoned, you know. But I took the cards with me because I'm going to get back into that, how the dark finds you again um, and in retrospect I shouldn't have done what I did with them but I'll, I'll get into that because they returned to me 22 years later okay the same cards and I'll tell you that so I went to this retreat and you know I felt God I felt I saw Jesus I fell to my knees I knew I knew God and the Holy Spirit and the father energy and at this point I, I had not bonded with the mother energy. I, I was connected to nature, but not in the way that I am now. That didn't happen until I really drank ayahuasca. Um, I always had a connection with plants, and I always had a connection with the earth, but it wasn't to the ability that I have now. And so I've always had worked with father energy predominantly up until, I'd say, the last three years, four years. It's been more mother and falling into my feminine. And... When I was there, I felt Jesus, I felt the Father, I felt uh, I needed Jesus to cast out those demons from me, you know. And uh, I became part of the youth group, and I had taken my tarot cards there, and I threw them in the garbage, right? I threw those that deck in the garbage. I had wrapped it in the black cloth that they came in, I didn't have the box, and I threw it in the garbage. Now, in that tarot deck, I identified with the Empress card, right? Um, and identified that that was me whenever I read. I still do that, but th there's a significance to the story. So <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this story. It's, it feels like a friggin' movie, let me tell you. So I can't even believe this is my life sometimes. I'm like, seriously? Like, how is this my life? Like, people have such a normal life, and I just don't. I never have. So <laughs> it's crazy. Um, which is why I have a high spiritual rank. So <laughs> it's okay. I get it now. I get it. So... I became part of the youth group, right? And I was doing like youth group things and became a youth group leader and running youth group retreats and stuff like that with them. And we started praying the rosary and I started seeing Mother Mary, you know, she would come to me and talk to me and, um, and I've had this ability my whole life, you know, the white buffalo woman came to me when I was only about two or three years old, Jesus came to me when I was about five. Uh, Ganesh came to me about in 2016. Um, Shiva came to me in 2017. So this has just been a prominent thing that we, like high masters come to me. And Buddha came to me. So I, I just have this thing. And so when I was in the youth group, uh, the lady who was leading it, she's like, okay, so how's everyone praying the rosary? What's your experience? And I put up my hand first one and she's like what happened I'm like well and here's me in my naive childlike innocent ways thinking everyone sees Mother Mary <laughs> everyone sees Jesus <laughs> no Rena it's not a thing <laughs> like get that through your head um and I said well Mother Mary came and prayed by my bed and I was talking to her and she was praying with me and then I could tell my mom was coming in the room and I told her to go away because she's gonna think this is crazy and um the youth group leader just got really angry with me she's like that's that's devil work you're so working with the devil nobody sees like that and I'm like what and she came really hard down on me in the middle of the youth group 
and uh and I'm like, no, I'm not working with darkness. Like, it was beautiful. My experience was so beautiful. Like, I felt so loved. And she's like, nobody is closest to God but the Pope. And I challenged her in the middle of the youth group and in front of everyone. I said, how do you know that? How do you know that somebody else can't be close to God? Why is there a segregation that only the Pope knows that we have to go to a human? And she got mad and kicked me out. She told me I was the devil spawn, blah, blah, blah. It's not the first time I called the devil spawn. I'll, somebody in Venice called me the devil spawn too when I read the, the gondola guy and uh, he wanted to, he didn't believe in psychics and so he wanted proof and so I gave him proof uh, because God said that he's been praying and I gave him the direction that he's been asking and then he dropped me out of the gondola and said, you're Diablo, Diablo. And I'm like, okay, like, so this is not a thing for me either. <laughs> But remember that when you, uh, what did Jesus say? Jesus said uh, that, and I'm not going to quote it because I don't know quotes in the Bible and I don't believe everything that scripture has written. I only take what resonates, remember guys, okay? So, and I only work with Jesus so closely because of the demons kind of thing. So he is a hippie. He was into plant medicine, all that stuff. I, I don't believe how the, the story of Jesus is either. So I'll get into that in another aspect of my relationship with him. But uh, he did say that, uh, you know, when he was casting out demons, you know, the Pharisees would come and say to him, you work for Satan because you're casting out demons. And Jesus said, any type of unification of a foundation of a kingdom, whether it is Satan or whether it is the kingdom of God, needs a unification, not separation. And so... If it is Satan that casts out demons, then why would he create a separation that would take down his own kingdom? It means that it is the kingdom of God has come to meet you because it is the kingdom of God, the Father, that can cast out demons. And I was like, yes, this dude's a badass. I just read that the other day and I was like, yes, of course, because I, I mean, again, people have called me evil my whole life. I'm dark. I'm this and that, you know, I'm so misunderstood. It's <laughs> so misunderstood. It's fine. I've just come to accept it. And so I was kicked out of the youth group. And at that point, you know, I was about 19 years old at that point, 19, 20 years old. I said, I'm done. I'm done with religion, I'm done with anything spiritual, I'm done with uh, anything with my spirit. I'm going to focus on what I need to do in my life. So I studied my ass off, I got a job in the government, I got married, I built my house, I got my two cars, I did my children, all of that. It wasn't until I had my daughter that God opened me up again. Okay, And now I was terrified because I did not want to work in this anymore. Okay, I really didn't. This is God chose me to do this. I was, this is not, uh, I mean, obviously I put it in my soul plan. So obviously <laughs> I picked it too, but my human self is like, I don't want this. Screw that. I'm just going to live my happy life. And, um, <laughs> when I had my daughter, she's super more psychic than me. She's got like a whole other aspect of, of intuitive em empathic and sensitivity. And I was like, okay this opened me up and God really oops sorry I thought my um, I thought my uh, recording stopped sorry I just because I got a phone call but no um, and it's 3333 as I as I say that so um, sorry about that so when I opened up again after I gave birth that grounded me into my feminine energy which is something that I hadn't been working in I was mostly in predominantly working out of a masculine mindset because I, I moved very far in my career. Uh, I worked for government. I ran projects across Canada. I have a high business sense and I really worked on my intellect, that aspect of the, the masculine mind and making money and doing that. And uh, after the birth of my child brought me into this feminine energy that, oh God, it was so hard to fall into. And if it wasn't for my children, I, I wouldn't be here, to be honest. They're such a gift to me. And, um, I started to fall deeper into my feminine and I, and I noticed my intuition was picking up um, because my daughter's super psychic and I realized the sensitivity and I realized the mirroring of how sensitive I was and how strange I was and how she has that same thing going on and I'm like, okay, 
I need to work with Jesus because I couldn't work with no other deities. No, that's just not my path. Again, everyone has to come into their own knowing of their spirit and their relationship with the universe themselves. That's that's uh, not anyone to say. And if you're listening to this, I'm the I'm here for the ones that are really ready to level up and uh, stand their power against these darker forces, because uh, that's just the next step. Um, so I didn't work with any deities. I didn't pray to any. I didn't do Kabbalah. I didn't do uh, spell work. Um, I did do spell work, but I did white magic. And, and we'll talk. There's a difference between white magic and black magic. And the series is going to go into the depths of this. As you can see, there's a lot of information that I have. But I wanted to do the story time because um, so you guys could get an understanding of uh, the dark and light and how I know the discernment on a very fine-tuned basis because I too was being siphoned and uh, I worked with Jesus right from the start you know um, I prayed I asked Christ to come in and guide me and it was a very slow process to gain my trust to know who to work with who not to work with and uh, I stopped doing readings at a certain point too. they guided me to doing readings I became very popular up north in northern Ontario where I lived at the time and to the point where God wanted me to clear out homes and I'm like what I don't know how to clear homes and God's like yes you do and I had just put an ad into the local new age shop and someone had messaged me um, to clear her house but it was poltergeist activity and I was like I, I, I had a mentor at the time and I asked my mentor to come with me to that house because I had no idea what the frick I was doing. And <laughs> I was like, okay, this is like over 15 years ago, right? I was like, are you kidding me? My first house is this dense, dark energy. Like God threw me in the, and this house still can't be cleared, you guys. It is a vortex of darkness. I think I could probably do it now, but um, I'm not gonna, I'm not, don't take my word on that God. Don't take me back there. So anyways, I, uh, <laughs> um, I was like, seriously, why do you keep throwing me in this dark stuff? I don't want to. I don't want to. But God kept throwing me in there. And I, it's like, this is not something I could avoid. Like, my heart and my soul, I was praying. I was like, no, please, God, I don't want to do this. You know, like, I don't have to work in it. But I had really no choice. God kept pushing me to work in it. You know, it's, it's my soul's calling. Like, God, like, I can't even. And it's kind of like the same thing I tell my, my mom, like, my parents, and, you know, like when I fast and go to the moon dance for four days and I don't eat and I dance to the moon and, you know, I do these weird things. I'll do a seven day water fast to clear up my energy and whatever. And I don't eat meat and I've been eating meat since I've been here in Guyana, but I have to stop because it's affecting me again. And, um, just things like that. They think I'm weird. And I'm like, do you think I really want to stop eating chicken curry? Like, do you really think that I want to not eat seafood? Like seafood is my favorite. I'm like, that's my human stuff. My human want, self wants it. My human self wants it. But my spirit is not allowing it. So there's like a split that happens, you guys, right? From the human desires, the flesh, right? To the spirit and what the soul wants. And, and there's a transitioning that happens, right? From the ego into the spirit. And when we become aligned with our higher selves, when it's time for that higher self to fully come in and take expression of God through you, right? Expression of the masculine, the feminine, the balance of those two energies through your vessel is when you follow the soul's calling more than the human stuff. And uh, it's not easy, right? It's not easy. I'm like, why am I doing a seven day water fast? What the frick is wrong with me? <laughs> it's, like, it's not for a physical thing. It's because my spirit is guiding me. And like, I can't even, like, I would never think that I would dance four days, do eight temescals in four days, which is sweat lodge, you know, and dance from like, from when the sun sets to the sun to, till dawn, you know, for hours on end with one break in between, like, it, and your feet are sore and it's like real warrior stuff. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, this is, <laughs> this is not a thing. I can't. Anyways, like, as you can tell, like, I so I'm in disbelief of what I do. I'm like, what? How was this a thing? So, okay. And, um, yeah, so <laughs> spirit's taking me back into like knowing the discernment of, of uh, when I was opening up again that I, I built my way back up and this was 15 years ago guys 
that I pulled away from people that were siphoning me. I was learning about how people, I, I'm a clear mirror for people, I'm completely clear. And they, people have an issue even being my friends because I hold my power very strong. And even though they may not know subconsciously of what they're doing to me, they, uh, subconscious patterns that they haven't healed, they try to come in and siphon me. Um, in a way to gain power because they don't know how to gain it from the one God, right? From the true creator and the mother energy. They only know how to siphon again. That is how most of humanity works. But again, we have to go through the different stages and finding our light and wherever our light guides us through karma too, right? Through past lives, through things that we have lost pieces of our soul that were siphoned from these dark forces. It could be to a piece of land. It could be to a person. It could be to a tribe. It could be whatever your karma that was created that siphoned your light or you were, you gave your power away. Those things need to return to you to build up and stoke your fire to come into true alignment. And so all of this stuff that comes back to us, this karmic energies and people doing black magic, there's a karmic tie to it that we have to gain our power out of it because it's happened for eons, for lifetimes. And this is where I'm here to help Twin Flames to do that. And wherever we're guided, if you're guided to work with Isis, work with Isis. If you're guided to work with Aphrodite, work with Aphrodite. If you're guided to work with Aishol or whoever else, just remember, just be aware, and this is my message, that they are not the true one God. You you have to be, have that discernment to know that yes, they were created of creation, but they only have elements of God, like you do. They're, so they're not any different. They're not higher than you. They just have a different knowledge base that you need at that point of time. And if you can look at it from that point of view, but to know when something resonates with you and when it doesn't, and not to give your full power away, because these entities, that work through these different deities will take from you if you give that up. And that's a very important thing to know. You can't give all of yourself up to these other beings. Your full surrender is to your creator every single time, never to a deity. I'm sorry, I don't know who's doing this drilling. So I'm sorry if you hear that. Um, so be aware that if you are pulled to work in spell work or magic or different aspects, just have that discernment that they are not the almighty. And you should be bringing in your creator energy, the creator of your soul, into your work, no matter who and what deity you are working with. Okay? That's very important, especially in witchcraft. A lot of people work with Hecate. She's a demon. Okay? She... Uh, it's dark, okay? Uh, Isis, too, has... I, I love Isis. I'm not get me wrong. She brought in a huge power of Isis, um, and I honor that. I honor that power. And she had the ability to go into the underworld and bring her twin back and all of those things, which is beautiful. But she is also just a goddess. She is not the all, right? Or the creator of God. So it's very important to know where you're putting your power and how you're working in energy and to gain that discernment. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Spirit. So as we're coming to the, the story, oh my God, this is 43 minutes of me talking, I can't even. So as the darker forces and I was gaining this power, I'm going to tell you what happens in the medicine community and the medical and the medicine people that I thought were good and Spirit wants me to expose them. And what's recently happened in my twin flame journey. Um, I was pretty much the point before I drank ayahuasca, very pure in my calling, uh, alleviating a lot of myself, falling into my feminine energy, uh, left my career, knew that I had to keep building up my, my spiritual business and all of that. Uh, had to come back home to my family to heal. I had to sell my house. I had to basically purge everything that I built out of a foundation that was egoic, okay? It wasn't my choice. Again, God led me down that road, and I had to let go of all of those things to allow spirit in to build me up. And it's taken, this has been taken, it's a long process, it's not easy. And I had to heal with my family, and that's what I did, and that's what I'm still doing. And then I went and got the call for ayahuasca, which is not something that I was contemplating on doing. I had done drugs in the past, and I didn't want to put anything in my body. I was still a heavy weed smoker at that point. I don't smoke weed anymore, so 
um, only if there's a shift in consciousness or working in an exorcism or doing some type of, because you have to understand marijuana, cannabis takes you into the lower realms and it can be beneficial, right? But it doesn't work with Christ energy. Okay, so um, if you can hold the discernment of Christ and God and the Father and ground that into the mother energy and be able to use cannabis, that's why Shiva said if you use cannabis, you have to be very enlightened to work with it, okay? Uh, because the cannabis will take you into the underworld, and if you haven't healed to a certain point, it will take you to those, those places, right? And you have to be aware how to hold your light in those places, okay? And again, I'm not for saying that it's bad. It's not, nothing's good or bad. Sometimes you have to keep going into your own addictions. You have to keep going into your own darkness to find your light, right? So that's a process too that I completely honor. That is the path of the wounded warrior. That is the path of true healers. That you consistently go into your darkness to find that light in your own light. That means that you can eventually take people into those places and help them. And that's how we help each other as a collective. And so when I drank ayahuasca is when I met my twin. And I thought, oh my God, I finally met my tribe. This is amazing. But I also knew of the karmic energies because I was put into a room with a woman who had killed me in a past life. And I saw this and who wanted my twin. And my twin, his light is so bright. Uh, everyone wants his light. Everyone wants this, this man, honestly, because he's so powerful. Um, but I didn't honestly give him the time of day, to be honest. I didn't feel anything for him. I felt when I first met him, I was like, he's interesting. I was curious. I was like, what is this? I feel really different with him. Like, it wasn't an attraction, though, right? Because remember, <laughs> true twins, it's not going to be the Zaza Zing. That's how dark energy plays. That's how dark energy siphons you. It's like, oh my God, this person's amazing. I'm in love with him. Oh my God, I'm so attracted to this person. It's how we've been conditioned in love and sexuality and what we find attractive. It's never going to be that way with your twin. Ever. It's going to be like, there's something here, like the curious seeker, you know, that I need to discover. What is this? And in the first half of the week, he and I bonded like peas and carrots is what I'm here like for. It's gum, you know, we, <laughs> for, we're like peas and carrots. And I was like, I don't even know how I can even do the Southern accent. It's kind of funny. I think it comes from my twin. <laughs> I can talk like that, like a good old Yankee style, like a good old Alabama uh, accent. I don't even know where that comes from, so <laughs> I think it's from my twin. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we bonded for the first half of the week and had our activation. It was after our activation that, that uh, we couldn't merge fully. Uh, there was still karma that was happening because there was the girl who I was rooming with who was still massive karma who was putting a split. I think he was scared. I was unsure. I was like, what the frig is this? And it was such an awakening. Um, yeah, that I, uh, we didn't talk for the second half of the week because I was like, he doesn't, what is going on with, I, I just, it was just a confusing energy. That's all I'm going to say. I, I couldn't place it. I was like, how did I have this profound experience with this man? And I we're not even talking like what? And I wasn't even going to message him. So I had decided to stay an extra two days in Mexico. Now, this is where I'm going to call it these medicine people who are dark. And there were two individuals. I'm not going to say names, but if you follow me, you know who they are. They no longer work with who I know the main shaman is, who is part of my tribe, uh, and his twin. Basically, these two women broke up their twin flame connection because of the dark magic that they do and broke up my twin flame connection with their dark magic and broke up the main shaman's retreats and what he was doing because they got him involved in the black magic as well okay they got my twin involved in the dark magic and pulled in the karmic partner uh into the black magic so i can't wait for righteous alignment and for how god is doing this so i want you guys to know i'm inundated with people doing this black binding stuff to me and i'll tell you what God showed me with these people. So when I stayed for an extra two days in Mexico, they decided I could, was able to go to the main shaman's house and stay at his house for a couple, two, three days. And I hung out with this, these two people, these two women who organized and did these retreats. And they were talking about the aliens when we got there. 
and saying that they were coming to them and all of that and everything. And that night when I was sleeping, uh, one of the shaman, the, she's a shaman, well, she calls herself a shaman, but she's a dark entity, basically. Uh, she can't stand me because <laughs> she doesn't like my gifts. Like she even said to me, how do you get so high up there? I want to get to where you are. And I'm like, I don't know. It's not something that I seek. I, it, this is not, it's just who I am. I don't know. I don't know how to get where I am. But I noticed that during the ceremony that she, when she said that to me, I was like, why does she want to have what I have? And that was the first inkling that she siphoned energy. The second was well, when I was at the house that night, these dark forces came into my room and surrounded my bed. But they weren't able to overtake me because I work with Christ. Because all this time, you guys, for years, God prepared me for this, okay? To be in my twin flame journey, to be part of this whole karmic crap that the dark energies work in, right? It's taken me almost 30 years of healing to get to this point to help you guys, okay? So... Like I said, I didn't just wake up and just decide to do the twin flame journey. I've known of my twins since I was a child. Um, so anyways, these dark entities could not take overtake me. The next morning, they came to me and they said, Oh, did you feel them last night? Did they come to you? What happened? And I'm like, yeah, I sent them away. And the woman, who's the medicine so-called woman, she's like, they didn't do anything to you? They didn't, you didn't accept them you didn't talk to them I'm like no I sent them away she's like how did you do that I go because I know my light okay and I didn't know what was going on at the time but I do now okay um so when I came back home after all of that I had a dream of everybody in the retreat it was a very vivid dream and I was taken to this old farm and everybody that was in that retreat, my first retreat, was there with me. And we were all in this farmhouse, and we were all kind of hanging out. And eventually, one by one of them, they were all taken, you know? And I was like, where's everybody going? And then all of a sudden, I woke up. It, it, my dream moves into me waking up into this old living room where there's like, ghetto like 70s like shag carpet and a brown shag couch kind of thing velvet couch or whatever and these dark entities were around me and they're like she's not going under she's not going under and i was saying in the name of god you do not have a right to take my light that is my light you are not allowed to have it and they could not siphon me they could not put me under so then i'm still walking around this farmland at this farm and i'm completely trapped and the woman who organized the retreats came to me in the kitchen in this dream. And I was like, oh my God, you're here. You need to help me. I'm trapped. I don't know where everybody else went. These things are trying to like take from me. They're trying to siphon me. And she, and they were starving me. I'm like, I'm so hungry, you know, because they're take, trying to take my light. And she's like, here, she pushes some fruit to me. She's like, just eat it. And I saw her eyes flip. Because what I noticed was, oh yeah, because in part of the dream, some of the people had returned, but they weren't themselves. They had entities in them. And I'm like, this isn't them. Where did their souls go? And I noticed the woman who organized those retreats, okay, her soul was gone. She, it was like a, a dark thing was there, and she's like, just eat the fruit. Just eat it, Lena. Just eat it. I'm like, no, you're one of them. No, no, no. And I planned my escape, and I escaped the farm that night. You know, God led me um, and showed me. It was like a shining light showed me where to go hide uh, in the barn and then to hide by the tractor and to run down the road. And it got away, so they weren't able to do that. Now, fast forward, okay, when I went and did ayahuasca with my twin two years ago, they tried to bind him and when i brought my friend a dear friend of mine who's my best friend he's a gay man but he's and he's my best friend um they tried to siphon him as well okay and they binded me and my best friend together so that they could move my twin away and work with the karmic partner to house her and to create a lot of this dark magic right to to take his power because he has a power okay and now what happened was when they were siphoning him, ayahuasca called me to go to uh, drink ayahuasca in December, which was two years this past December, uh, 
it was a year sorry this past december that i went was it yeah was it two years or it was a year a year this past december um and apparently i didn't know at the time my twin ended up being in mexico at the same time and when i went to the ceremony the same woman who organized the retreats came up to me and she's like what are you doing here like really me and i'm like ayahuasca called me now do you know that entire ceremony was about my twin that there was a piece of a soul that had severed from him whatever they were doing to him was trying to cast out his soul and i retrieved because we're the same soul i accepted him i received him and he said i'm when i'm ready i'm coming back in a very powerful way once i work out all this stuff and i was able to hold on to his soul for him his light uh, because I know that they're binding him and they're doing all this karmic stuff right now. Okay, so Ayahuasca helped us and saved us that way. Mama did, the mother, you know, Mother Earth. Because we're the original seedlings that first came to Earth to bring in the Kingdom of Heaven. So that entire ceremony was because uh, God needed me there. And I later found out that the ceremony that he ran was with these two women. He didn't like it at all because it was it was a dark energy that was trying to siphon him and through the karmic energies they're doing all the spell work binding i see her wrapping jewelry giving it to him like just constant dark magic and last year when i did my moon dance i cleared so much and i could feel my twin and i could feel i had dreams of us dancing and he was pulling me back to him and when I came back from the moon dance, I knew union was coming close. And again, something binded us that I woke up sometime in April, right after COVID hit. Um, my whole left side had seized up because they decided to bind me again with um, my best friend. And they used my best friend to pin my location because they did it through location. And I've just recently found out all of this. And so, <laughs> I also know all of this karmic stuff had to happen in my twin flame journey because my twin has to recognize energy work. As much as I had to go through the darkness, this is his initiation to work through it and to see what these people are doing and how they have split up the twin flames. They've split up the original shamans that brought us together they no longer work there and they're still trying to siphon his energy through this karmic to build something to benefit them okay and i don't even work with those shaman. i don't work with anybody anymore i'm not even working with the female shaman i love her to death i have a high respect for her she is amazing at what she does not the not the two it's the the original twins that broke up that were running the retreats together uh the female counterpart She's amazing, but there's something happening that um, we have to come into a deeper understanding in our journey together, and uh, she's getting an understanding of what this black magic is because we need to bind together. I know my calling is about twin flames. I know my twin and I are supposed to bring these other two twins back together to work because they're friggin' amazing when you have twins working in medicine and then my twin and I work in medicine and there's another set of twins who work in music together and there's another set of twins like this is the grid work that we're starting to create so I know um, I'm putting this out there and God wants me to because the truth shall set you free and I have to do it you know and I don't care who gets upset about it because I'm just really over it and uh, the binding is unraveling now and so I've come here to Guyana to my family home because a lot of the demons that have been siphoning my family's lineage with the psychic ability also works with the energy of the binding black magic okay so I kind of want you guys to understand my journey and this is why this has gone on for so long and I'm so sorry that it's gone on for so long there's just I have so much information and this series is going to go on for a bit because I know everything spell work black magic dark like everything every deity every god every whatever I've done it all because remember I have almost 30 years of in this work and uh and developing psychic gifts so I know the fine attunement of god and it's a small path you guys and just because you have psychic ability and you have empathic abilities doesn't mean 
that your channel is clear and we have to remain humble to that because and i had to do that too i had to know when something was trying to siphon my energy i had to know know that that's a small shift that doesn't feel right instead of just being okay with whatever energy comes into my system it's not a thing we have to form this discernment it's so important and this is why i don't go to read no reader can read me i i had a friend who sent me to this reader she's like oh my god you need to go see this she's amazing she's so psychic i'm like okay she couldn't read a damn thing on me and i'm like yes because she's dark <laughs> like my my energy is so protected because of how fine-tuned i've become and uh yeah, and so these medicine people, what I'm being shown is they've done this binding magic on me, on my twin, and uh, I know there's a healing that's happening now. My twin has to discover what this darkness is, how to manifest properly, and he had to go down a route. So you see why the karmic partners are really important, so that they can gain their light in that. Now, from the other point of view, my twin is, I'm going to say, lucky to have me as his twin. Um, because I've done this work and so I can meet him in all darkness of anything. It doesn't matter what it is I, I have the ability to do that if it's incest abuse emotional abuse physical abuse drug addiction Been there done that eating disorders did it healed it anxiety healed it uh, Depression healed it all of that healed it body issues healed it like everything I'm completely healed and and that's another thing like the the two women that are dark and working with I know they're working with the Kabbalah and other things um, at one of the retreats you know I had nothing off to heal and she didn't like that she's and she was even sarcastic to me in the middle of the group she's like oh because Rena has nothing else to heal it's like I don't what do you want me to say like I'm integrating now and manifesting and grounding the energies like like bitch please you didn't do 30 years of healing. Like, <laughs> I'm done by healing. Go away. <laughs> People have such an issue when I say that. But it's true. I've done my healing. I'm just integrating. The next point for me is to be able to hold space with my twin and to show him through the last part of his darkness and healing some really deep traumas that he's got. And it's really funny because my hands started peeling. My right hand started, which is the masculine side, and now the left side is peeling. So there's a balance happening in my in my journey right now. But I wanted to bring that up because this is what the feminines usually have to do. Very much like what Isis did. You know, you got to go into the darkness and heal. And so if you're a divine feminine and you're dealing with black magic, we have to, I mean, you're gonna, you'd have to book a coaching session with me because I get direct messages from next steps from God. And I'm going to tell you, the healing journey is uh, and the discernment and the practice. You have to put daily practice, divine feminines, into your work into healing into uh your power and claiming your power out of the darkness and if you're being binded by magic you can alleviate it you can alleviate the karma now we, we when you coach with me we go into like past lives i get to see the connection of where the karma first originated from i get to see the blocks in your chakra i see where you're mo where you need to move to i'm able to see the righteous alignment that god wants right i'm seeing the overall plan and I know people hate when I say that because they think that I'm trying to influence their journey. But we need healers, too, that are able to guide you through the dark. We live in a dark world. And I'm not saying that that's your path or that's not your path. I'm saying that's not your alignment of where your higher self wants to come in. And so God takes my, me and my clients through some interesting practices I get all kinds of downloaded different things for different people but if people are willing to do that work and they follow the direction that God brings through my clients have an awakening they have an understanding and it sometimes it takes them into a deeper grieving process but that's in order so that they can crack themselves open to pray and prayer is one of the things that I preach in my practice you need to learn how to pray to the Creator and to become humble to the Creator to your creator who created your soul because we're not god we are the expression of god and to become the expression is to humble to the power of god and you can't uh be god because we are one consciousness on this planet trying to wake up we are in different forms different expressions different bodies so we have to each become the expression as a whole to become the manifestation of god on earth so people and you go to readers and healers to say you are god you you are no that's not a thing that is an ego place to, to go to a healer, I've had one healer say, we can abolish your ego now. It's like, no. It takes time and work to, to tame the ego. Now, the ego is needed. 
because you're still going to need contrast in this life to constantly be moving into the light now it becomes it becomes easier you pick up on the triggers faster like oh that's my ego okay i need to go to the complete opposite and the contrast and that comes with practice that it becomes an automated system within you but we have to switch the automated system in within us through the healing process right so again if you if you're a divine feminine and you want to work with me um that is some of the work that i'm doing i am in south america now i am asking mama ayahuasca to call me uh hoping with my shaman as well that we can reconnect and build and do ceremonies for divine feminines again and what we were originally planning but there's been a stall in that because of all this binding stuff what's been happening to me and my twin and i can tell you that my best friend and I are completely aware of it. We're complete aware of their black magic. We're completely aware that they are trying to siphon and they've made me out to turn evil. Like they've told everybody that. I know that. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, because I know who I speak to. I speak to my creator. And I know now. And I'm not, and I'm not holding back. You know, and that's why I want to be here for you guys. And I honor the power in you guys, right? That's what I'm here to do, is to bring you, my brothers and sisters, into that full alignment of yourself, okay? And into your twin flame journey, because we need twins to come together. It's, it's the Holy Trinity. It's the real Holy Trinity that needs to come down here on the planet. Okay, so that was my story so far. That's, that's part one. I'm going to record, I, I don't know when I'm going to record again, I feel it's going to be another time this week, um, in regards to uh, the karma, they're saying past lives, and how past lives are very important, um, and that you bring down a memory of the past life, of the stuff that you haven't been able to heal, that it will reflect in your soul lessons in this life, and uh, we're going to talk about that, and about karma and how that plays in. We are also in this series going to get into black magic and, and white magic as well, spell work, and how to properly do spell work, and how in throughout history that the, the witches and the spells have been um, siphoned also by dark forces. All religions have been forced, uh, has been siphoned by dark magic and by darker entities. Again, we have to go through and nitpick and find what resonates with our light within us, and that is the truth for us. So even if this isn't resonating for you and it's not for you, then it's not for you, you know? So no hard feelings, just click off. And uh, again, um, if you guys want to do a reading and you want to work with me, email me for a reading. That info is down below. If you want to do a coaching session, that's on my website. It's called The Starlight for New Clients. And uh, yeah, I'm sending you guys so much love. I would love to hear your comments about this. I'm sorry this was so long. But I needed to tell you a bit about my story so you guys could know where I'm coming from and how I know energy so clearly and I'm sending you so much love it's so lovely I'm so much more in flow here working with my family and healing and being in the land I can't tell you being in this land with my lineage is is perfect and um, I'm sending you guys so much love and uh, yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you soon bye